We've been talking a lot today about sending kids back to school. Different school districts have different policies when it comes to the pandemic. And so the question becomes, what is the safest way for your kids to return to in-person instruction? Joining us right now is uh, Nurse Alice Benjamin. Uh, Nurse Alice, if a parent sends their child back to school today, are there things they should be looking for maybe in the next week to 10 days? Symptoms maybe? Yes, so I'm glad that you mentioned that time frame because we know that uh, someone can develop symptoms anywhere from two to 14 days after exposure. So you'll be want to look, be, you'll want to look for symptoms. Now we know in children, some of the most common symptoms are cough and fever, but still looking for any type of chills, fatigue, body aches, sore throat, loss of taste and smell. Looking for all those things, but you know that's only half the battle because about 50 percent of kids are asymptomatic. So. You know, look for symptoms, but it still may be a little challenging. It could be important to monitor their behavior um, and how they interact with school. So then the question a lot of parents have, if there is an outbreak at the school, you're talking about a lot of children there. Even if that child's classroom was not impacted, how worried should you be? Well, I think it's important uh, for parents to know that the L.A. Unified School District has a a very uh, detailed COVID uh, plan where they look at intervention, the planning of testing, um, how they're going to handle situations when students or staff test positive. So I think the first thing is parents should be familiar with that document that's on the website. But now if if someone does test positive on campus, there's definitely a plan for what will happen uh, that will isolate the child, notify the uh, parents and, you know, do contract tracing. But it's important to know that, yes, we do expect some kids to test positive, but for the most part, kids do fairly well. 50% are asymptomatic. And those that do have some symptoms, they're very mild um, and very low rates of hospitalization um, or deaths in children. So I want parents to take reassurance in that, that kids are pretty resilient. You know, Nurse Alice, you're talking about COVID symptoms. How different are those from the common cold? And as a parent, how do you tell? Has the LAUSD taken care of that by having this constant testing? Yes. So um, it's going to be challenging to tell the difference between COVID versus the cold because they share many of similar symptoms. So the LA Unified School District are having um, weekly testing for staff. Um, and students, you know, they have masks that students are, are, excuse me, staff are required to wear. Anyone on campus is required to wear. Um, they have, they've assessed their ventilation. They've made a lot of interventions there to make sure that this is a multi-layered approach so we can keep our children safe. So um, I think parents, again, go to the LA Unified School District website and look at that COVID planning uh, document. It's going to tell you all of the details that are there. So you as parents can feel reassured and are knowledgeable about what the school is actually doing, because the school is actually taking a, a lot of steps to keep our children safe. Uh, one of the best in the nation, I would say, too. Nurse Ellis, very quick question here. Uh, should your child be wearing the mask the whole time he's at school, he or she, indoors and outdoors? Your opinion on that? My opinion is yes, because we're going to have a mix of vaccinated and unvaccinated when it comes to children and staff. Um, and because of that, uh, we know that we're not going to always be able to physical distance six feet. So it's going to be important that children always wear their masks. The only time the masks need to come off really is during eating. And so I know that people get concerned about that. But if children are eating outdoors, they're wearing their masks as soon as they're finished eating, washing their hands, and everyone around them is vaccinated, then I think we're in the right stepping, stepping in the right direction to keep our kids safe while they return to school. All right. Nurse Ellis, as always, thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you.